Hey guys, I am in the middle of knitting my beekeeper cardigan right now. This is the body of the beekeeper, and I'm actually on the row where I'm about to make the bee, the bee, the starting of the bee pattern. So I thought what I would do is record a quick little tutorial and show you how to knit that beekeeper stitch. This is a cardigan pattern that is designed by Marie Green of Olive Knits, and it is a cardigan pattern. It's a top-down raglan style cardigan pattern. And you can see it starts, it, it has this reverse stockinette at the top, and then it sort of works down to the body. Right now I have divided for sleeves and I'm knitting the body part of it. So the reason why I wanted to record this video is because when I first started making these bees, like when I first started on this first row making these bees, I was a little bit confused because I am seeing the photographs of Marie Green's finished cardigan and so I can see that the stitches are nicely elongated and there's something about that stitch that looks like it's been pulled up and and made out like stretched really really long and so while I was knitting it I wasn't seeing that happen right away so I thought I was doing something wrong so I kept trying to fiddle with it trying to um, pick up different yarns and strands and pulling them out where they should not have been pulled out um, and in fact the patterns are very simple so let's have a quick look at what this little bee stitch looks like once it's all knit up and you can see that there's little bee stitches here little bee stitches here and they are arranged in a way where they are offset from each other so each row is offset so it looks like they're forming sort of a diagonal pattern throughout so in order to form this pattern basically one row of these little bee stitches takes six rows of knitting in order to happen and then the next set of bees is offset and that takes another six rows of knitting and so all together one of these repeats is 12 rows of knitting so i'm going to show you right now i am on row one of this one pattern and then i will show you all the steps so to begin this first row what i'm doing is i'm purling one two three stitches and then this is where the bee is formed so I move my yarn to the back and then here looking at the next stitch you can see that this is the yarn that's actually on the needle tip and then there's one bar here and one bar here so I'm looking at the space that is below the second bar of knitting and then I'm going to knit into that stitch so I'm taking my needle tip into the center of that hole and then knitting from there pulling that yarn out so that's my knit stitch and then with this when I let go of it you can see that it kind of runs so in fact one two bars of knitting have run behind this stitch okay and so as I'm knitting the stitch, you can see these two bars have run, and that is actually what is forming the wings of the little bee. So I'm gonna show you that a little bit more close up. I am purling three, purl, 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 and then I take my yarn and put it in the back, and then looking at the stitch that is on the needle, I look below that and then look at the bar, a second bar, and then I'm going into the hole that is formed below the second bar of knitting. I'm gonna knit into the center of that hole, and then I take that stitch off of the left-hand needle, and those two bars basically run, okay? And so those two little bars that have run, those are gonna basically form the wings of the bee. And then I just continue on. Pearl, pearl, Pearl into the hole below the second bar and letting go. Now one of the ways that you can check your work and make sure that you're making the bees in the right place is that they need to be offset from the bees that have happened in the previous row. So when I look at my knitting I'm looking at this bee here and I'm looking at this elongated stitch here and then I look up, 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 up. So that is the center of where that is and it needs to be offset. So when I purl three, that center stitch of the previous motif needs to be right in the middle of those three purls. So if I purl, the second purl needs to line up with the middle of that previous motif, 
then I know I make one more purl and then I can make the next motif. And then the next motif, the next little bee, is going to be centered in between the previous two little bees. Okay, so now we are on the back side of the garment. We are on the wrong side of the garment. I'm just gonna purl my two edge stitches here, okay? And now we are ready to go. So looking at the back side of your project now, you can see where those bars were dropped down they're forming sort of like a little little bump here. So it looks like it's mostly a stockinette except for these little bumps. When you reach those little bumps, we are going to slip those stitches with the yarn in front. Okay. So you can see these first stitches, these first stitches are knit stitches. They were the three pearls. So we're gonna go knit, knit, knit. And when we come up to this next stitch where it looks like those stitches were running down, they, they form a little bar in the back here, we're going to move our yarn to the front and then just slip that stitch, okay, with the yarn in front. Then move the yarn again to the back. And so you can see it's made a third bar. And so what the little bee pattern is, it's, it's actually a slip stitch pattern. So we're slipping that stitch and then pretending to, to work it, but we're not working it at all. And that is what helps create that elongated look to that bee stitch. So again, we're going to go knit, 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 and we come across the little bar, the little bee on the back side, bring the yarn to the front, slip that stitch with the yarn in the front, then move the yarn to the back, then knit, knit, knit. Okay, so here we are starting the third row of the little bee pattern. You can see what we've done here already. These are the stitches, these little V stitches. These are the ones that have run in the back. And then these stitches that are still on the needle, but they look longer, those are the stitches that were slipped. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna just purl again those three purl stitches when we get to the slip stitch, we're gonna knit that to basically tack it down. And then the next ones, purl three, knit one. Purl three, knit one. It's pretty simple from here. Okay, so we're gonna purl three. And then moving my yarn to the back to knit. You can see there's my slip stitch. It looks nice and long and stretched out. So we're just gonna knit that one and that is the body of the bee. And then we'll go three, purl three, knit one. Purl three, knit one. So now as you can see, those three rows basically form your bee. So the first row is to knit into the hole of the second uh, row down, and then the next row is to slip the stitches, and then the third row is to basically tack down those slip stitches. That's basically all there is to this stitch pattern. The next three rows are basically knit the entire row, and then purl the entire row, and then knit the entire row. So that's six rows to make one row of bees. And then you just repeat those same six rows, but you offset it. Like I said before, you offset it so that the middle of this motif lines up with the middle of these two motifs. And so it's just a combination of these six rows and these six rows is 12 rows. That makes your little bee pattern. But the only thing you really need to remember is these three rows to knit the stitch pattern. Everything else is super, super easy. So that is basically it for this stitch pattern. It looks more complicated than it actually is. It sounds like 12 rows of knitting and pattern is is uh, complex, but it's actually not because there's only three rows out of those 12 rows that you actually need to remember. So that is it. That's how we knit the little beekeeper stitch. Maybe you're knitting this sweater already. Maybe you'd be interested in knitting the sweater. It's actually lovely. I hope that it fits once it's done. But in any case, if you like this content, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe. And you might also want to hit the bell. The bell lets you know when there are new videos available on our channel, which is typically every Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will be with you guys hopefully next week, after Knit City, if I survive. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, bye for now.